Hi everyone, I'm Pratima and this is the smallest action camera in the world. It's the Insta360 GO 3. I've had it for about two months now and I have been really, really impressed with it. For its size, it has given me some great footages but at the same time, a lot of people might also be thinking I can get better videos from my iPhone so why would I spend money and get something like this? So today I am settling the debate, can the $350 Insta360 GO 3 beat my $1200 iPhone 15 Pro Max? Let's find out. Okay, first let's talk about what the Insta360 GO 3 can do. It can shoot regular videos at 2.7K 30fps, time lapses at 1440p and slow mos at 1080p 120fps. Whereas my iPhone 15 Pro Max can go up to 4K 60fps for normal videos, 1080p for time lapses as well as slow mos. Sure, with 4K video support, iPhone seems to have one right away, right? But wait, there's more. Because the Insta360 GO 3 is an action camera, you will get extremely stable footages whether you're running or climbing or doing any other action sport, which is not the case with iPhone. Uh, we do have a dedicated action mode on the iPhone 15 Pro Max, which does a great job of stabilizing videos. But imagine climbing a steep hill or running really fast carrying an iPhone. It's painful, no doubt. On the other hand, the Insta360 GO 3 is a tiny action camera that can literally fit anywhere and its weight is non-existent in your pocket or in your bag. So if you're someone who travels a lot, carrying it around is not going to be a hassle. Plus, you get this magnetic necklace with it, which means you can simply hang it around your neck or attach it to your cap with this holder. By the way, you get all these accessories inside the box of the Insta360 GO 3. Anyway, what I mean is you don't even need to carry it around, it just stays wherever you put it. So your hands are free to hold a stick while hiking or while swimming and such. It just takes off that extra burden. Okay, so convenience aside, let's get to the video quality and I'm not going to lie, you can get sharper and crisper footages with the iPhone. Over the years, iPhones have evolved to become such great video capturing devices and comparing the Insta360 GO 3 and the iPhone 15 Pro Max's normal video side by side, you can see how iPhone's output is sharper with better dynamic range. But the area where the Insta360 GO 3 really shines is in a couple of things like stabilization, field of view and your ability to get creative. For instance, this is a side-by-side -side footage of me running really fast with the Insta360 GO 3 and the iPhone side-by-side -side. and you can see how the Insta360 GO 3 is able to effortlessly handle my movements whereas my iPhone has started to struggle quite a bit. I did turn on the action mode on the 15 Pro Max as well which caps out at 2.8K by the way and even though it did a fairly good job at stabilization, the field of view is surely compromised and the videos don't look as natural as the one from the Insta360 GO 3. You also get an option to lock the horizon on the GO 3 so even if the camera is shaking or rotating quite a bit, you can keep the subject locked at a certain angle. Also, with the Insta360 GO 3, you have numerous options to get creative and it does not take a lot of effort to do so. Take this POV shot for example, which makes it look like you're in a video game. And um, I know this YouTube channel where people attach Insta360 GO camera on their cat to get their POV shots and those are absolutely adorable. Likewise, one of my favorite shots to take with the Insta360 GO 3 is the low-flying drone. So uh, if you ever visit Kathmandu, you will come across world heritage sites at almost every 30-minute driving distance and the architecture there is just beautiful. However, most such sites don't let you shoot with the drone and you have to take permission to use a professional camera as well, which is a whole different process. So what I did was I attached the GO 3 to the longest selfie stick I had and I took this cool drone like shot with it and it did a pretty convincing job I would say. I also find it incredibly easy to film myself with the GO 3. First of all, it has this rotating flip screen so it's really easy to switch from the rear to the front quite easily and another cool trick is to attach it to a metal surface and shoot yourself in case you're traveling alone. That way you can get cool shots of yourself without anybody's help. Likewise, I find shooting low angle shots very convenient with it. So as I said earlier, the creative possibilities with the GO 3 are unlimited. I mostly shot in the auto mode because I found it easier to just point and shoot. But if you know your way around cameras, you have a manual option as well. And you also get various color profiles like standard, vivid or flat, which you can use according to your preferences. I mostly went with the vivid option for punchier output. You also get two sets of built-in microphones with 
it, which works decently in normal conditions. Okay, comparing the audio quality between the Insta 360 Go 3 and the iPhone 15 Pro Max, well, I can't really complain about iPhone's audio quality, but in windy conditions, the Insta 360 Go 3 is able to capture clearer sound and has better wind resistance. Plus, you have different audio modes tailored to vlogging, like you can choose direction focus mode if you want to capture sound from a single direction. There's a stereo mode and wind resistance mode as well. The Insta360 GO 3 as an action camera is also meant for tough environments. I have dropped it multiple times and it has withstood all of that like a champ. While I have to use my iPhone with the utmost care, especially considering how fragile the iPhone 15 Pro Max's back panel is. Alright, so at this point, I have praised the Insta360 GO 3 a lot, but there are a few downsides that I want to talk about as well. First is the battery life. With the action camera alone, I was uh, able to get a recording time of around 35 minutes when I shot at 2.7k throughout. With the mounting case, you can get about 1 to 1.2 hours of additional juice, which means with a full charge, you can get about 2 hours of recording time, which is not much when you compare it with an iPhone or any phone for that matter. And the Insta360 GO 3's nighttime video capabilities are just average. I mean, for its size, it does not do a bad job exactly, but during nighttime, the videos are softer and because it has a smaller sensor, it cannot take in much light either. Alright, so we've come to the end of this video and I think my verdict is pretty clear. If you travel a lot, if you are an enthusiast and if you want a portable budget camera with good enough video capabilities, the Insta360 GO 3 is a pretty convenient option. Its pocketability and user-friendliness are some of its top advantages. At the same time, your iPhone or any other Android smartphone that takes good videos is your best companion if you just want to shoot regular videos. If you want to get a bit more creative and stand out with your videos, you will not regret getting the Insta360 GO 3 and it's going to stay in my bag whenever I travel. So everybody, that was all for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and while you're there, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Saying this, I'm Pratima Adhikari and thank you so much for watching.